So it's a little bit windier than I thought it was gonna be down here. We're probably gonna get hit with a blast of wind. Might even see the camera shake a little bit, but it's such a gorgeous day out here at Lake Balboa that I just needed to get out of my office, get some vitamin D, actually uh, soak up some sun. But I wanted to follow up on that last video I published about my Samsung camera uh, shitting the bed, just where I'm really sad that that was the case. Uh, I did get a reply from Samsung. Uh, it took a little while longer than I was hoping to. Um, if I had been relying on that for work, uh, that definitely wouldn't have been super great. But um, after a couple days back and forth with Samsung customer service, it's going to be around 200, 250 uh, to replace uh, the parts in the uh, in the NX30, and that's right at the threshold. That's what sucks. Is I kind of had a, a mental dollar limit that I was uh, thinking of for repairing that camera, and it was like right on the precipice. So I, I, I'm at that point, I think I'm going to let the NX30 go. Uh, I think it's just time. I, I know I had a lot of people that were trying to, to help, uh, leaving me comments and uh, trying to leave suggestions on different things I could try, like you know, maybe I should pick up a used camera. And I, I guess part of the, the issue was, and I, I, I was I, reading back through those comments, I'm coming across really, uh, really argumentative and I didn't want to be picking fights with people in my comments especially people that were trying to uh, trying to help in that in that way but I make a significant portion of my living you know like how I pay rent and put food on the table through production in general and YouTube specifically so the notion of trying to dig up some kind of used camera which wouldn't have any kind of warranty no guarantee that it was gonna last as long as the money I'd be putting into it and not being able to take a significant step up. So if I'm looking at, um, if I'm looking at say the NX30, I don't wanna get another NX30 because they're older and I would like to improve video quality over the camera that I had before. So that would mean moving up to the NX1 and that's still a thousand dollar proposition. So a thousand dollar proposition for a camera with, uh, on a dying, on a dead system, there, there aren't gonna be any new lenses for it. No one's really gonna be supporting it. Uh, Samsung's probably gonna have parts for a little while, but that's a lot of money to put it, to put on something and then to still have no guarantee that there wouldn't be something wrong with the camera, that the camera hadn't been abused. Um, I, I, a lot of people were saying, well, you can check the shutter count, like the number of shutter activations. And you're like, well, that's great. I know how many pictures have been taken, but these cameras are often picked up also for the type of video that they shoot. Um, and, and I know I ran my NX30 really hard, really hot, um, shooting tons and tons and tons of video. So that's all life off of the electronics. Heat kills electronics. So if you're running that kind of stuff hot, you know, you have to imagine that the sensors still got some mileage on it. You know, they're hard miles. So uh, the NX, NX1 was really just out of the question. And, and for a number, another really silly reason is that I really want a camera with a flip out LCD, um, one that I can easily, in any situation or any, any circumstance, point the camera at my face and know that I've got it framed and in focus properly. And that actually knocked out a number of Sony cameras. I know I've got a number of people, uh, a number of uh, people watching my videos that were fans of Sony, and I'm a fan of Sony hardware, but it's only really uh, a step up for me when I'm in my office or when I'm in a controlled environment. I just thinking back to trying to cover the Galaxy S8 launch and fumbling around with holding another phone and syncing up with my camera and trying to make sure all of that's working and that I've got the shot in focus and then I can point the camera at me means that every single time I want to make sure that I'm still in focus, that I'm still in the frame, that I'm still properly shooting what I want to shoot. I have to pick up my phone or reactivate a Wi-Fi connection or turn on an app. And that, that's just not as easy as you think it might be. Um, when I'm in my office, that I rely on that kind of stuff a lot because you know I'm in a controlled space. No one's bumping around me. There aren't other Wi-Fi signals being blasted. You know, no one's knocking over my tripod. Uh, it's it's a lot easier to handle uh, that kind of work. So weighing all the pros and cons, I think I have to try and sell off my Samsung lenses for whatever value they might still have. Uh, I might be able to get a couple hundred bucks for them still. So. That'll go towards new glass. And I'm pretty well set on moving over to Panasonic. Uh, I really wanted to go with the GH5. I'm kind of sad that I'm not going to be able to make that transition. 
but I've been shooting on the G85, and it's not a terrific camera for stills. I, I, I don't think I love the still photo quality from Micro Four Thirds in general, but the video has been on point. I just need faster glass. So that size reduction in image sensor means my depth of field isn't quite as as bocalicious, bocatastic as I'd like it to be. So I'm gonna, I, I have to get some faster primes. The kit lens is decent. I mean, it's a good kit lens, but I really need something that's gonna, you know, sort of open up that shot a bit more, uh, get me a little bit better low light capabilities, and then blur out the background so that I don't have those hard pinpoints of light. I spent all that time and effort putting those, those sparkly lights in the bookcase, and now there are these hard points of light, and you're like, ah, I don't like that. I want those soft bokeh balls, spheres, those globes following me in the background. So, uh, unfortunately, I can't front the costs for a GH5, but $1,000, G85, flip the Samsung lenses, hopefully get a couple bucks for that. I can pick myself up at least a basic fast prime, uh, maybe something like a, a 25 millimeter f1.8. I should be able to make that swing, so I should be able to make the move over there. My audio kit doesn't change at all. Um, I'm just really gonna miss a few things. Like, I miss having the ability to charge the battery in the camera. Um, there's a, a micro USB plug here, but it's only for data. And that, that, that kind of move drives me crazy because they're really only doing that to sell extra accessories like a power pack, AC adapter, AC to DC converter. So there's a, there's a way that you can hook one of those power packs up to an external battery. I'm gonna look at that because I don't wanna have to have a bunch of batteries and a bunch of chargers. I think that's a huge pain in the ass. Um, I, I miss being able to just pull out a battery, plug a USB cable into the camera, and then just run with that. Um, that was one of the best, it's silly, that was one of my favorite features that I'm gonna miss from uh, from my NX30. But you know, I've got a 4K camera, it'll do 1080p at 60 frames per second, I guess I still get that crunchy video, and I get my beloved flip out LCD, so I guess this is gonna be the solution. Um, I, I, I'm always excited about upgrading. I'm always exciting about. I'm always excited about providing higher quality video. But this isn't really the way that I wanted that to happen. Um, I, it's it's why like the, everything that I've been talking about this has been kind of a bummer, tempered with just that little bit of. Uh, of uh, you know frustration so uh, you know future videos I've already shot a couple videos uh, using this camera uh, some some uh, reviews that have gone up on pocket now most recently uh, you should be able to see the quality there I had the uh, that vlog where I was talking about Tennessee's political move in uh, trying to expand broadband that was shot on uh, on the uh, g85 and uh, you know, it, it's it's great video quality. I am actually really stoked to be making that move into 4K. Video style, file sizes are huge, but um, but no, I think that's going to be cool. I think it's going to be a nice step up for the channel. It's just I wish I'd been able to plan it and execute it the way that I wanted to, and not be in this move where a broken piece of gear is kind of putting me on the sidelines for a little bit. And then I also have to throw that shout out to the V20 because the V20 came in clutch for helping me finish up a couple videos when uh, my NX30 died. So props to LG because that. Phone is, is a killer performer when it comes to shooting video. So folks, uh, that's uh, a lot longer, a lot more talking than I thought I was going to do. And uh, hopefully you've been able to just sort of be distracted by a beautiful, gorgeous day in sunny Southern California because I'm going to be hiking around Lake Balboa, just kind of taking some photos and uh, shooting a few more little video samples and just uh, trying to wrap up my week, trying to have a, a good day because this is, this is beautiful weather and I don't get to take advantage of it as often as I'd like to. I'm always cooped up in my office. Uh, as always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more rambling vlogs like these and drop me some more comments. I know we did a video on Pocket Now uh, just sort of detailing the pros and cons of shooting 360 video, but I'd really like to get your all's input on other things that we could be doing in shooting 360. I'm getting kind of tired of all 360 videos just being like, here's a sample of me driving or here I am at an art gallery in 360. I mean, like, I think we get it. I think we get 360 degree video as it pertains to just capturing the scene around you, the locale around you. I want some more ideas. I want to I want to try and futz with more uh, content or, or especially more narrative. Or is there a way that we can do reviews with this kind of with this kind of video? Drop me some comments down below. I'd love to get into some conversations about that. Links below this video, how you can support production on this channel and then be on the lookout. I'm going to be uh, flirting with vid.me to see if we can't uh, if I can't spread some other video content onto some other platforms because YouTube's pissing me off, but I'll have to save that for another vlog. So folks, uh, like, follow, subscribe, catch me on Twitter and Instagram as some gadget guy, and I will catch you all on the next video.